Charles Sanko was a Danish lieutenant during the Texan Revolution. He is famous for being the only Dane present at the Alamo in 1836. Charles was born in the area around Randers in Denmark in 1808. He lived in Denmark for 26 years with his family. After the death of his mother, Charles and his father Frederick decided to leave Denmark behind to start over in America. They settled in Harris County in Texas in 1835. Texas, which at the time of Charles' arrival was a part of Mexico, had seen a massive immigration of Americans. After the Mexican War of Independence, the Mexican government had taken control over a large area that they couldn't control without the help of local militias. The province the Mexican called Teas had a low population and was vulnerable to attacks from native tribes. The Mexican government therefore encouraged immigration to Teas to strengthen it. Many of the immigrants that settled there were from the United States and it didn't take long before the Americans outnumbered the Mexicans in Texas. The same year that Charles and his father came to Texas, Mexico had started to change their politics from a federalist model to a centralism, which started some revolts in Texas. President Antonio López de Santa Ana decided to send more troops to Texas to keep the peace. In the fall of 1835, it came to open fights between the Texan army and the Mexican army. While the relationship between Texas and Mexico got worse, Charles and his father got settled at their new farm in Texas. They both worked at the farm, but Charles was also a painter by trade. Charles followed the situation between Texas and Mexico, and he decided to join the first volunteers at Lindsberg to serve the Texans' cause. Due to Charles' background as a painter, he was assigned the task to design a flag for the company. He came up with a blue flag with a white star and the controversial text Independence written underneath. That meant that Charles very well could be the first person to paint a lone star on a Texan flag. One of Charles' first battles were at the siege of Bexar. He was a part of the Texan militia that between October 12 and December 11, 1836, kept the Mexican city under siege. Charles helped with the bombardment of the city since he was a part of the Texan artillery. The Texan commanders had a hard time controlling the undisciplined militia, but they managed to keep from deserting or making a premature attack against the heavy fortified city. After a few months of siege, the Texans finally made an assault against the Mexicans and was victorious. Charles stayed in Bexar after the siege as a part of the garrison under Lieutenant Colonel James O'Neill. The Texan leaders were afraid that the Mexicans would retake the city, therefore was James Bowie sent to Bexar with orders to remove the artery and blow up the Alamo fortification. However, he changed his mind and became committed to its defense. Charles was promoted to lieutenant and served as the assistant to the garrison's artillery chief. Meanwhile, President Santa Ana started to recruit soldiers for the Mexican army to retake the Alamo. The Texans had a hard time finding reinforcements themselves. On February 3rd, cavalry officer William B. Travis arrived with only 13 men and a few days later the famous David Crockett arrived in a small group of volunteers. On February 12th, Santa Ana and his men crossed the Rio Grande, but due to bad weather, his army was slowed down. Charles and the rest of the Texan army entered the Alamo on February 23rd, which signaled the beginning of the siege of the Alamo. The Mexican raised a blood red flag to signal that there would be no quarters. The reason for this was that Santa Ana had passed a legislation saying that all rebels should be treated like pirates. The Mexican kept the city on a siege until March 5th, when Santa Ana, to the surprise of his officer, ordered an assault on the Alamo. Charles and the rest of the Texan had been under heavy bombardment throughout the siege, and without reinforcement or provisions, 
they would have had to surrender within a short time, but Santa Ana demanded an assault. At dawn, March 6, the Mexican army attacked the Alamo for all sides. About 1,800 Mexicans advanced towards the Alamo. Due to the high number, they were an easy prey for the Texans' preloaded cannons and rifles. But the people in the rear pushed the Mexican forwards and it didn't take long before they were at the wall. The Texans had trouble reloading their rifles while keeping the Mexican from scaling the walls. They soon had to abandon the walls and retreat to the barracks which led to some bloody hand-to-hand -hand combats. It didn't take long before Charles and the rest of the Texans were either killed or taken as prisoners. The prisoners were executed afterwards since they were seen as pirates. Charles and the others who died at the battle were all stacked and burned, while the Mexicans were buried at a nearby cemetery. While Charles, Sango and the other defenders stood at the Alamo might not have given the Texans any military advantage for the rest of the revolution, it proved to be an inspiration for the Texans army for the rest of the war, with the famous words, remember the Alamo.